As the Western Conference playoffs started, there were a lot of teams in the spotlights. The Houston Rockets just broke their franchise record for most wins in a season, and the question remains, is this Harden and CP3's year? Then there's Golden State, who came into the playoffs very beat up, and Steph Curry was injured. They could be in for an early playoff exit, but probably not. Damian Lillard just had an incredible MVP caliber season with the Blazers exceeding all expectations and grabbing the third seed. The Oklahoma City Thunder had some ups and downs in the regular season, and they're one of the most polarizing teams, but how far can their talent carry them in the playoffs? In Utah, all eyes are on the rookie, Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz finished the season winning 28 of their last 34 games, and they massively exceeded expectations. The San Antonio Spurs, on the other hand, were not like their usual selves. For the first time in like 20 years, they failed to reach 50 wins, and with Kawhi's injury, or lack of injury, that was the main headline all season. The 8 seeded Timberwolves made the playoffs for the first time since 2004, so this was their first successful season in a long time. All 7 of these Western Conference teams drew all of the attention. All of them have some unique storylines that fans are very interested in, and for the most part, it's continued to be that way. But then, we have the New Orleans Pelicans, a team that nobody even cared about after DeMarcus Cousins went down with a torn Achilles. A team that now only has one legitimate star in Anthony Davis, who's insanely good, but nobody thought they'd be in this situation, with a series lead over the third seeded Blazers and on the verge of winning the series quite easily. I know the two teams are separated by only one game, but it's still surprising. In fact, once the team lost to Marcus Cousins, most did not even think they'd make the playoffs. Although the Pelicans started to gain some steam with Cousins in the middle of the season, they were still struggling to stay in the playoff race, and when a team loses its second best player and arguably the best center in the league, it's reasonable to assume the Pelicans would miss the playoffs. But after Cousins went down, the team finished the season with a respectable 21-13 record, which was a bit better than the 27-21 record they had with him, with a similar difficulty in their schedule. So why was that? Well, first off, around the time of the Cousins injury, the Pelicans also acquired Nikola Miritich, who was having a career season with the Bulls and fit in really well with this team. Miritich is a low-usage player who shoots well from all areas of the floor, and he plays a lot better when surrounded by better players. Although he was still pretty inconsistent in the regular season, he stepped it up big time in the playoffs so far, especially his 3-point shooting. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about too. Before the season even started, everyone thought the main issue with the Pelicans would be their spacing. Cause with two bigs like Cousins and Davis who are better near the rim, and the team also has Rondo, the spacing should have been bad. Except, they still finished the season shooting 36% from 3, which is the same percentage as the Rockets. Although the Rockets took a lot more. This was mainly because of guys like Etwan Moore and Darius Miller having career seasons, which was unexpected. Additionally, the Pelicans picked up Emeka Okafor and played him as their new starting center, but in the playoffs they put Davis at center, which he doesn't like to play, but it works best with their lineups. Drew Holiday has got to be the most underrated player in the league right now, and I'm not gonna lie, I never thought he'd be playing this well. He's putting up superstar numbers while also playing elite defense on Lillard, and he's basically killing him in this matchup. I'm hoping Holiday makes at least second team all defense. Honestly, he's been one of my favorite players in the past couple of years, but he just couldn't stay healthy. Now he is healthy, and everyone gets to see what a healthy Holiday looks like. Then, of course, there's playoff Rondo, who steps it up every time the playoffs arrive. Just like with the Bulls last year, Rondo once again led his team to two road wins in the first two games of the playoffs. But this time, he's not injured, so that's bad news for the Blazers. He's averaging basically a triple-double, but more importantly, he's locking down on defense. The Pelicans have a pretty simple system on offense, where they run pick-and-rolls or side pick-and-rolls with shooters and Anthony Davis rolling to the rim. With Rondo being an elite passer and Holiday being a great scorer and passer, they're finding the best shots for everyone. Plus, Davis is kinda unstoppable in the pick and roll anyway, especially since nobody on the Blazers can even remotely defend him. On the other end, the team is trapping Dame and CJ every time they have the ball. They're trying to force everyone else to beat them, cause without Dame and CJ setting everyone up, nobody else can get their own shot, which has been a problem with the Blazers the entire season. 
This defensive scheme by the Pelicans has been working really well, especially when Rondo is actually trying on defense. So with all that being said, this leads to another question. Are the Pelicans better without DeMarcus Cousins? Well, here's what I think. I say no, they're not better without Cousins, but they've been playing a lot better with Davis at center, because I think the team is better suited to play him there. I know Cousins is a great player, arguably a top 10 player when healthy. In the 48 games he played this season, he averaged 25 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.6 steals, and blocks per game on good scoring efficiency too. But the thing is, there are a lot of things he does which negatively affect the team. First off, the turnovers. The guy averages like 5 turnovers a game, which is ridiculous. Well, it's not that ridiculous nowadays since everyone's usage is increasing and Cousins had a 32% usage rate. But look at it this way. I've watched a bunch of Pelicans games over the season, and almost every time I see Cousins turn the ball over, he complains to the ref and doesn't get back on defense. So the opposing team usually gets an easy basket, cause Cousins is always arguing with the ref and he's late running up the court. In the 48 games he played, he registered 7 or more turnovers in 13 of those games. Yikes. That's what really hurt the team. Secondly, he also commits a lot of fouls, which is another issue that he's had since he came into the NBA. He commits nearly 4 fouls per game, and it's the reason why you see him get benched at crucial points in the game, because he can't afford to get another foul. Despite his otherworldly talent, he plays too emotionally sometimes, and it's a double-edged sword. On the other hand, the Pelicans were looking a lot better midway through the season as the chemistry with Cousins improved. They won 7 of their last 8 games before Cousins went down with the injury. It's gonna be an interesting offseason too, Cousins is going to be an unrestricted free agent, but if the Pelicans make a great playoff run this year without him, would they even re-sign him? I mean, he's gonna demand like 30 million a year at least. Maybe the team would be better off using that cap space to acquire other role players who fit in better with Davis. It's too early to tell, but I hope the Pelicans can surprise some people. If they get past the Blazers, I don't think they're making it out of the second rounds, but hey, it was a successful season regardless. And that's all folks, how far do you think the Pelicans will go in the playoffs this year? And do you see Cousins in a Pelicans jersey next season? There's no guarantee he'll even stay with them since he's unrestricted, he can go wherever he wants to, so uh, it's a toss up. Anyway, thank you everyone so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.